Hi guys, it's your girl Lola Loves You, and I'm back with another video. Um, well, if you read the title, um, Internet Sensations, Samantha James has passed away today. Um, she passed away. I think she had heart failure, and I think they said she had COVID. So don't, um, allegedly. So that's what I found out in my findings and doing my research of how she passed. So. She passed away today, and how ironic she passed away one, two, three. And Samantha always said one, two, three. She passed away 12, um, you know, the month of December, and the day was the third. And she always said one, two, three. That was her catchphrase. I just want to say, Samantha, may you rest in peace. <laughs> no more pain, no more suffering, no more hurt. Thank you for the laughs. Thank you for that beautiful smile. Thank you for your crazy antics. You are going to be greatly missed. But you can't hurt yourself no more. No longer. No more suffering. And no more pain. Rest in peace. <laughs> well, I first came across Samantha James years ago. What's that like? Ooh, 2013, it was like 2012, 2013, it was a long time ago, y'all, like over 10 years ago, and she was at a train station, and she, she said her famous quote, one, two, three, get, get up off of them, y'all know what I'm talking about, and I'm like, this lady is crazy, and you know, she was transgender, so you know, I'm transgender, and I was like, oh my goodness, so I start following her, you know, following her on Facebook. She was really popular back then on Facebook. And I would follow her and she was so hilarious. But my favorite memory of her, she was in back of a uh, ambulance. And she said, um, she was just saying, my name is Cookie Tookie. And she had the oxygen mask on because I think Samantha had a real bad asthma at, time, at, at times. And she had the breathing machine on and she just was crazy. I mean, all types of antics. And she would take us everywhere. When I say us, the people, the audience, she would take her phone and our name would be Kia. And she would talk to us and she would take us all around Philly, all around the world. Anywhere she would go, she would take us, take us with her. And then, you know, her life, you know, she started turning around for the better. You know, she was getting bookings, gigs, um, and um, brand ambassador opportunities. And people really was knowing her. She, you know, she was meeting all types of celebrities. And all types of celebrities knew who Cookie Tookie was. Everybody knew who Samantha James was. And then she um, would get arrested and do a, a lot of jail time and you know, when that happens, other sensations come out the woodwork and other people. And if you're an addict and you don't know how to deal with life, you don't know how to get back, you know, get back on um, track. And if you know, so things started, you know, dwelling, like after she would um, do a jail some some years in jail, she'll come back and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. But I think her being in L.A. was the worst because she was originally from Philadelphia and, you know, she had love, support and family in Philadelphia. But she went all the way across the other side of this, you know, United States. And you don't she don't have nobody out there. So she just was really, you know, diminishing in L.A., in my opinion. But. I want to go a little deeper with this conversation in memory of Samantha James. Just being a transgender female. Let's talk about that in this video. I know um, this is, you know, my strictly channel for um, Whitney Houston, Lola Loves You channel. But, you know, I'm trans. And I'm trans and one of my sisters passed away. So, if you don't like transgender or transgender topics or you not really want to talk about, you know, or you're not worried about Cookie Tookie, Samantha James, you could click off the video. This video is strictly a tribute to Samantha James and to black transgender women. It's all transgender women, but especially to black transgender women. Um, a lot of us, okay, before I get, before I, you know, start just talking about having conversations about being a black transgender woman and things that can happen. Um, if you are 
cisgendered female, um, you know, female at birth and male at birth or whoever, and you identify as that or, you know, heterosexual or you might be bisexual or um, homosexual, you know, this is really for you how to, this is an explanation of how a transgender person feel because we're not cisgender. You know what I'm saying? I might was born one thing, but I'm presenting something else and I'm embodying something else. And I transition to something else. So this is really for p the people on the outside looking in, you know, for the experiences what true trans people go through and how you can be more of an ally or not even an ally, just not being in the way of a transgender woman's journey. That's what I want. You know, being respectful. Respectfully. Even if you disagree with it, just being respectful. Okay. I'm I'm a transgender female. And we all have that. All of us are not the same. All transgender people are not the same. Majority of us say we really knew that we were trans when we were children, but we didn't understand. We didn't know it was a name for it. You know, we felt like we was born in a wrong body and things like that, which we are. Our souls and our spirits are just not connected to the physical. And people try to make the thing, God don't make, make mistakes, but that's true. He doesn't make mistakes. And that's our, not even about a mistake, it's not a mistake, but that is who we are. Just like, you know what I'm saying, someone born um, with cerebral palsy and stuff like that, that don't ostracize them or demonize them. That's, they just was born with, that was their disability. So I do kind of see it is a disability, not to feel sorry for me, but a disability to know, okay, somebody, they just not doing that for fun. Now, some people do it for fun, but I'm just saying a true transgender person. I'm trying to get you trying to, to um, I'm trying to gather your thoughts on trying to fathom where a transgender person comes from. Now, when you are transgender, um, especially for a black transgender, our life expectancy is not to pass the age of 35. So if you pass 35, you're doing wonderful, especially as a black transgender woman. And someone like Samantha James, I don't know what was her family situation. I don't know what factors or trauma that went on in her life. I don't know what was the, her factors of her being a transgender woman and transitioning. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody trans, um, transition for different reasons. You know, some people transition because somebody said you look better as a girl or they get more attention as a girl. Where some people, as myself, you, we knew who we were from day one. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you could try to act and um, play along to get along. Oh, I'm not this. I'm not that. But deep down, it's going to get you. Is you're going to have to accept and face the truth. Now, some people don't have the self-esteem to face that truth. Some people don't have it at all or have that willpower or fight in them to face the truth. And they will, they know they're trans, but they just don't want to go with the difficulties of society and just reality in, in a whole. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes that could be a too much for the transgender person themselves. So can you imagine your family and your friends or whoever the case may be trying to accept who you are or trying to just make sense of it? But it's it's weird like that. It can be weird if it can be weird like that for one, if you don't have a faith base and you don't know who you are as the person. If you're not saying this is who I am and that's what it is, and you love yourself, embrace yourself. You're going to go wherever the wind blows and you ain't going to really have peace in life. Now, it's one thing to accept that you are transgender. Now, it's another thing living it. A lot of us, you know, family might not like you. They put you out. Your friends gone. People that you knew for years know their dark, deep secrets. They gone. Or ostracizing you. Oh, girl, I accept you for who you are. And then misgendering you and saying other things behind your back or whatever the case may be. The men that like that are trans attracted, well, females too are trans attracted. And when I say trans, I'm talking about trans. I'm strictly talking about my transgender females, but we know with transgender males as well, where female trans just transition to males, they still have, you know, that's drama in their lives too. Their lives are not so impacted as like a transgender female is, especially a black one, but their lives are impacted as well. Then you have to think about the people that find you attractive. 
that like you and know that you are trans. You understand what I'm saying? So they feel like they feel some type of way, which can get you in hurt, harm, danger, you know, or you're not having a healthy dating life or just a healthy relationship ever in life. And that's sad. And that's a lot of us transgender females have gone through that, will go through that, or it's going through that. Bottom line, when you transition, and this is the truth, and I'm going to tell you, baby, you're going to be lonely. No one understands you. And it's so sad how society is. You have other transgender people that can't really, you know, understand you, but we just can't get along as a whole. And it's so because we allow society to play parts in our mindsets and dealing with each other, not trusting one another, not because we've been hurt so much by society. We're so scared to get rejected by our own kind. You know, having a sisterhood or brotherhood or unity, you know, for the trans men and the trans women, you know what I'm saying? Having a sisterhood and a brotherhood is so hard, y'all, because everybody is not the same. And as a trans woman, especially as a black, I'm going to keep enforcing a black transgender woman because we have it the hardest. It's, you're very lonely. You're faith based. Your faith base. When we come into this world, you know, major majority of us, especially as black, we come with a faith base. Jesus Christ, our personal savior, which I accept Jesus Christ, my personal savior, and I'm going to forever accept Jesus Christ, my personal savior. But we'll have society to try to strip that from a transgender person. You will strip that from a transgender person. And when that happens, I tell anybody, you can't, nobody can keep you from God but yourself. Whoever you believe in faith based, nobody can keep you from that. And when you trans, you know, you have other people in your ear, oh girl, you know, other especially trans people, oh, well, I don't believe in respectability because I'm trans and blah 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 blase blase squase. And that's fine for you, but for me, I still believe in respectability. I still believe in Jesus Christ, I still have a faith base, and nobody is going to change my mind about that. I know who put breath in my body. I know who I pray to. And I know who I said is my personal Lord and Savior. So, and I, and respect me respectfully. If I believe that that's my, you know, respect me for that. Just like if you believe something, I respect, you know, that's your thing. That's, you, that's between you and your God. But I know who I believe in. So a lot of trans people are stripped from their faith base because they allow society to do that and play upon their, their belief systems. And, oh, God don't like that. And da -da -da -da. God don't make mistakes. And da -da -da -da. But they'll let, they let an uh, alcoholic, a drug addict, or whoever out here, person that do destructive things, oh, God still let them. God ain't, God ain't worried about the sin that he's worried about the sin. And they say these little things in tactics. And so a lot of trans people are going out here faithless. They don't have no type of faith system. And that is a major thing that can break a person down and make, have built destructive behaviors, in my opinion. Now, a lot of people always say, oh, why trans, especially black trans women, stuff like that, things like that. Why they always in sex work? They always doing this. They always in adult entertainment because those were the options, especially back then that was available to a transgender person putting a roof over their head or food in their mouth or just a safe space. And it still goes on to this day because of society. It's because of society. Things like that happens. And I blame, it's a 50-50. I blame the society and I blame trans girls. Trans people, we have to stick together as a whole. True trans people. Because we it's a lot of frauds out here. We're going to get to that. But it's a lot of frauds out here. And true trans people... I don't care if you get along. I don't care if you agree with somebody, but always disagree respectfully. I'm not going to see my trans um, sister hurting, hungry, or need support. And I, if I have the means, I'm going to help her. If I can, if I can, I'm going to help her. And I will hopefully, she hopefully she will help me and somebody else or whoever the case may be. As transgender women, we, it's no type of unity. You understand what I'm saying? It's no type of healthy unity. And that has to change. And with the unity, and if any 
type of women that are role model trans women, a lot of them have chips on their shoulder. A lot of them, they, they're so educated. Oh, I'm so this and I'm so that, that you're down in your own sister. Transgender women can be really grouped. You got, and I'm going to tell you how this, this is how it goes down. You have girls that broken girls. You have girls that are nine to five career, career oriented. You have girls that are surgery girls. You have girls that are ballroom girls. You have girls that are depressed girls. You have girls that are nine to five girls. You have girls that are in the adult entertainment world girls. So everybody, you got um, girls that are boy crazy girls. You got girls that, um, that they transition but they just transitioned because it was something to do. It was popular. It was something to do. But you, when they open their mouth, their spirit, their soul, you can tell that's a male, whether it's a gay male or just a male. It's just so many variations of a trans woman or just transgender people in general. Now, the average girl can get lost in the... Uh, adult industry world and with that comes you know and and she could get lost in the um ballroom world which really is both of those go hand in hand and then you got uh drugs and you around these individuals that are hom homosexual men judging you by your looks and telling you what a woman should and should not be a male telling you how to be a a woman that's that's something we that's backwards to me. I learned from being a woman from a woman. I didn't learn from being a woman from a male or a gay man or something like that. I had to experience that from my mother, my grandmother, my aunts, my cousins, and even some of my best friends at the ex best friends at the, now. But I had to learn from true women. Not a ma a gay man could tell me nothing about my womanhood. And um, drugs come along. We know drugs can come in all shapes and forms. As in when you're younger, from your friends, from people you're hanging out with. And that's when you are trans. Like I said, you are ostracized all your life. You are isolated by just society norms. And you just want to belong, especially when you're younger. So if all everybody in the group of your friends are um, doing party favors, you're going to do it too. Or everybody's um, doing adult um, entertainment work. Guess what? You gonna do it too when you younger, cause you're very impressionable and you want to fit in and you feel like you have a genuine uh, sisterhood or wh whatever you you know what I'm saying brotherhood or whatever um, variation of a trans that you are. You feel like you you just we just want to belong. You want to fit in. And some people just want to be a free spirit, a free spirited person, and experiment with all different types of drugs and things in life. And baby, sometimes that can be tr tragic. It can be very tragic. Being transgender and not having a healthy relationships with family, friends, and um, lovers. You understand what I'm saying? So the average trans woman is not experiencing having a, a first boyfriend. So that can like play on your self-esteem. And that's how a lot of trans women end up in toxic relationships. Very toxic relationships, things and, you know, dealing with things that they have not supposed to be dealing with. And then you're trying to mask that with party favors. And it's going to catch up with you. Especially your mental. Um, or just being, you know, you could be an honest transgender woman, which the average one are. And, you know, you can have a relationship with a guy or dating a guy. And he could just turn on you and it could get violent. And very, it could be tragic. And it could be life-threatening. And you and people, the society thinking, oh, you, she lied or she tricked him and stuff like that. And it's, it's, she didn't trick him. It's just him, his insecurities, him not accepting what he likes and publicly accepting what he likes. And it could turn very violent. And a lot of transgender women deal with that violence is no longer here because of violence like that. Or... You understand what I'm saying? You can't handle the pressures of life being transgender and you're hiding behind party favors. You, Like I said, you know, using it as a stress reliever. And it then all of a sudden you turn yourself into an addict. And you're making bad, deadly decisions 
and you start becoming um, numb and incoherent with reality in life. Things like that can happen. So that's why I tell people it's very hard. Life is hard in general. But then to add factors of party favors, it's not a game. It's not a joke. So that's a, a lot of things that transgender people go through, especially transgender females. Well, the moral of this video is giving praying tribute to Samantha James, rest in peace, and to give you of uh, the outsiders, um, an inside look of a transgender female, what things can go on, what we deal with mentally, and, you know, don't add fuel to the fire. If you don't understand something, disagree respectfully. Don't, I'm um, trying to inconvenience, inconvenience someone's life livelihood and just be judgmental of something that you know nothing about or don't even want to know nothing about and it's some things in life you're just not going to understand um may samantha james again rest in peace no more pain no more suffering and just know transgender people really go through things mentally and can you know be affected by someone's ignorance and negligence just of you not being respectful to someone as a human being. That's all I'm saying. Just respect people, y'all. You never know anybody's last breath, what they're going through, or the, why did they, the choices they made in life. You just never know, y'all. But um, for my any of my transgender people or whoever they like this conversation, I didn't go in depth um, in details of things. But if you want me to start a podcast or maybe a transgender channel, leave it in the comments down below. I would. I'm thinking about doing a transgender podcast. And just talk about things that I've been through or people that I know been through or go through or just things in general Because some people just want to know things, you know, they want to educate themselves There's nothing wrong with that But anyways, your girl Lola loves you and rest in peace again to Samantha James No more suffering, no more pain, I love you sister Anyways, your girl Lola loves you, I'll be back for another video Bye my honey bunnies